Grace to you and peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And welcome to a new adventure in worship at Elk Grove Presbyterian Church. We haven't done this before. We're going to be fine. I think two things uh, about this, what we're doing, are very clear to us in these times. One, we can't do worship the way we're used to doing worship. Two, we are going to remain in caring and worshiping and serving uh, family faith. And we will explore ways to remain connected to each other and to God. Today's service is such an attempt. And we will need and want your feedback about how today's effort went, with suggestions and ideas about how best to move forward from here. Please uh, let me know what you feel went, what went well, what worked well, and maybe things that didn't seem to work so well. What we know for sure is that God is faithful in every experience of life. And we can trust God to help us discover new depths of what it means to be the church together. As we start, let me mention a few things right off. Session has taken the responsible action of suspending our Sunday morning worship services um, at the church through the end of April. As recommendations come down about how long we need to continue these um, don't gather policy, we will decide about May and uh, following months. We will continue to provide these services via the internet. All other church activities are also on hold, of course. Um, I expect to be in my office pretty much every day, um, though we are all discouraged from venturing out. But if you do need to come to see me, please call me and make sure that I'm here. My telephone number 916-717-2995. Please continue to make your regular pledge payments or donations by mailing them to the church address which is 8153 Elk Grove Boulevard, Suite 50, Elk Grove, 95758. Also, our special uh, One Great Hour of Sharing collection is uh, coming up soon. This is a very important part of our denomination's worldwide ministry, and we will be sending out information to you about that. Uh, finally, some special thanks for those helping to make today's uh, service possible. To Virginia for recording the music um, for our new style of worship. To Joanne Helmick for the simple but elegant um, sanctuary decor. To Simon Engel for providing the technical support to make this possible. To Mac Dyer for getting our sound system up and running. To uh, Suze Morrison for providing the e-blast e connection. And then to Jim Konopinski for overseeing our website. Years. Blessings to all of them. And blessings to all of you who have linked into this service and who are keeping our faith community connected. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our prayer. Lord,
when I prepared this sermon series almost a month and a half ago, the lectionary text in the Old Testament assigned for today was Psalm 23. What could be more appropriate in these trying times than the 23rd Psalm? Let's listen to that now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's listen now to this hymn sung by Virginia. Join me now in this uh, acknowledgement of our need for God's grace as we pray. Gracious God, it is because of your forgiveness that we can admit our need for forgiveness. It is because of your acceptance that we can admit our need for acceptance. It is because of your love for us that we can admit how often we fail to love others. Lord, help us to be more open to your forgiveness, acceptance, and love and help us to be more loving towards others. Amen. And now listen to um, these words that come to us over and over again from the Gospel. Through Christ, the Holy One who knows us most fully is the same Holy One who accepts us most completely. In Christ we are forgiven. In Christ we can live new lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, listen to Virginia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the chapter of John, the sermon title that I gave to this is Transformed or Intransigent. It really has to do with this wonderful little drama, what happens to a man who is born blind, who meets Jesus, and how religious leaders reacted to him. Listen now for the Word of God. Jesus is in Jerusalem. He's been having an interaction, some more positive than others, with the crowds and with the Pharisees. 
This is where we pick up this verse. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is they, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had uh, formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he was. Others said no, but only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. Well, how were your eyes open, they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it in my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash, so I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees who asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud in my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, well, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a man who is a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that he now sees? We know he is our son, the parents said, and we know he was born blind. But how he can now see? Or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For formerly, uh, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner, this Jesus. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, and now I see. Then they asked him, well, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I've already told you, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insight insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke through Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in the sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And he threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? asked the man. Tell me, so I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will receive sight, and those 
who have sight now may become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What, are we blind? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Thanks be to God. Again, let's listen to Virginia. Hymn number 720, Jesus Calls Us. safe box. No surprises, please. Those are the central issues that I see played out in this wonderful little drama that John recounted about Jesus healing a man who was born blind. And it's easy to simply point at the Pharisees as the bad guys in this story, the ones who wouldn't get with God's new program. Of course, it's always easy to be critical of others, isn't it? But I don't think John intended to let us off the hook quite that easily. Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? That's what his disciples ask. Reflecting an ancient belief that God inflicts ills on those who have not lived according to God's commands, while God showers blessings on those who do obey. An ancient belief, yes. And one is that repeated over and over again in our own times. Whether that relates to individual people, well, you know, she would not have gotten sick if she had obeyed God. Or society on a much bigger scale. Maybe this whole coronavirus pandemic is a way of God punishing humanity. Jesus seems to say, life is not about assessing blame. That's not God's business about who's at fault for what. No, true life is about being willing to receive the grace that God wants to pour into our lives. It's about a trusting that whatever circumstances we may face, even in the midst of this worldwide pandemic, God is with us, just like that psalmist of old said. And what happens if we are open to what God wants to do in our lives? What happens when we allow ourselves to let go of the reins we tend to hold on to so tightly? Well, God may have quite a ride in store for us. That certainly is what happened to that man that Jesus healed. That blind beggar went from being one who probably tried to simply ingratiate himself with everyone he could, not wanting to do anything that might offend anyone, thereby make them unlikely to give him some kind of handout. He went from being simply a beggar to being an absolutely transformed man. When others doubt whether this man was the one who had not had sight, he forthrightly proclaimed, 
I am the man. When asked how he gained his sight, he simply recounts what Jesus did for him. When questioned by the Pharisees about what happened, he again simply told them what had happened. Which, as we heard, read some, uh, created some division among those Pharisees. Some simply discounted Jesus because he had healed on the Sabbath. But others said that a sinner could not do such miracles. Well, on it goes in the story. His parents not wanting to face the condemnation of the religious leaders. The man not getting into a theological debate whether Jesus was a sinner. But recounting that he had been blind. But now he sees. And finally, this transformed man eloquently confronted those religious leaders about how God must be working through Jesus. Those incensed leaders just threw him out. How dare he think he has anything he can teach us about how God works? A blind beggar, why, he didn't even know how to read the scriptures. What, what in the world does he think he knows? Like those intransigent Pharisees, it's never been fun, it's not fun being confronted with truths we'd rather not hear. It's not even realizing that there are parts of our lives we need to work on. I don't like to be reminded that I am somewhat less and oftentimes a whole lot less than the absolutely wonderful person that I want to be. There is safety in being intransigent like those Pharisees who threw out that straight talking man. Us listen to him? Absolutely not. He needs to listen to and learn from us. In talking about volunteers who want to help at Homeboy Industries, Father Boyle emphasizes that he's not interested in those who think they have something to teach gang members, but those who are willing to listen to and learn from gang members. Those of us who have gone to Honduras to volunteer with students helping Honduras have dug trenches and mixed cement and painted walls and listened to kids read English. We've helped. But more than just being helpers, we have been so blessed by the generosity and warmth of the adults we have worked with. And we have been so blessed at seeing how eagerly those children at the Via Soliata Bilingual School, how anxious they are to learn English and how very, very good they're becoming at learning English. The thousands of American students who have gone and helped build schools can feel proud of what they've contributed. And I suspect that every one of them can talk about how much that experience helped them learn about themselves and how blessed they felt by being with and listening to those Hondurans. Being blessing to others, yes, and being blessed by others. Our story of John with John concludes with Jesus finding that man who had been rejected by the proper people. He asked that man, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man replied, who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you not have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The gospel of Jesus Christ is always urging us to become aware of our own blind spots about ourselves, about people we find easy to dismiss, about people with whom we disagree. And the gospel is always urging us to look at the walls we build to protect ourselves, protect ourselves from our own unresolved demons, protect ourselves from those who might challenge the easy understandings we have become so accustomed to. The Gospel of Jesus Christ invites us to see with new eyes and hear with new ears. And the Gospel can free us to become the kind of people through whom others might catch a glimpse of God's love and God's grace. Indian theologian D.T. Niles said that Christianity 
is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. May we accept God's blessing and share that blessing with others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hymn number 13, our hymn of the month, The Mighty God with Power Speaks. Confession of 1967. To be reconciled to God is to be sent into the world as God's reconciling community. This community, the Church Universal, is entrusted with God's message of reconciliation and shares God's labor of healing the enmities which separate people from God and from each other. Christ has called the Church to this mission and given it the gift of the Holy Spirit. The church maintains continuity with the apostles and with Israel by faithful obedience to that call. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we gather in a different way, we are going to hold each other up in prayers around the joys and the concerns. I ask, um, send out an email saying, please share with me those things that you would like to be shared. What I'd received so far um, from uh, Kathleen and Doug Quinton. They said uh, Doug still is struggling with an autoimmune disease, so they just have to shelter in place. But they wanted to uh, reaffirm how really important this faith community is. So we pray for them. Lord, hear our prayer. The Irons family uh, had the wonderful celebration. They have um, twin niece and nephew who are celebrating their 15th birthday. These were twins who were born terribly prematurely, about a pound each. Here they are 15 years later doing just fine. So uh, that is our praise. Lord, hear our praise. And Christian Hughes asked for our prayers in terms of safe traveling for her as she goes down to Riverside to pick up her daughter Mallory after Redlands University where Mallory is going has closed. Well, those are the prayers that I heard. Now, I know that each one of us has our own concerns, particularly around our health and the health of those that we love, um, what's going on in the world. So let's continue in prayer. Lord, these are tough times, uncertain times. A lot we don't know. What we do know is you're the God who loves us and holds us and cares for us. 
and to continue to be with us. So we would hold up now those prayers that have been mentioned here. We would, in each of our own hearts, hold up those that we're concerned about. We pray for this country and, and, and for the world. We ask that our leaders um, in the county and the state and at the national level would be waking, making wise choices about how we will get through this the best we can. There are those who are mourning right now because of the loss. And for them we would ask your blessing and your comfort on them. We ask that you would help us be caring people, caring for others, those who we know, those who we do not know. Help us find ways in which we can spread that hope of God's presence during these difficult times. Help us to be those who seek to be faithful disciples of that one who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be weary? And long for my heavenly home When Jesus is my portion My constant friend is He His eyes on the sparrow And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. and sisters in Christ. This is a very different gathering than what I'm used to. But what I am used to is the wonderful ways in which we as a faith community experience God's grace together. So as we don't go out from this place, as we stay put wherever we need to stay put, may we trust in God's love, ongoing presence, who will lead us forward. Thank God for that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere